Hi guys, it's time for another travel story, and this time I'm with my friend Ambroise. Wait, it's Ambrose in English, um, right? What? Ambrose. <laughs> <laughs> and I met him at school, but he's a really international guy, right? Like, where are you from? <laughs> so I'm, uh, I was born in Germany, but I uh, lived a lot of my life in, in France and then Canada. And uh, so I lived also in the UK, Argentina, and uh, planning uh, to go on a trip soon to Asia. Mm. I'm um, an Asia trip. That was fun for me. Anyway, <laughs> so this story you're gonna tell us is from Argentina, right? Argentina, yeah. And buy yourself a wagyu burger for a hundred dollar note. So yeah, in 2013 I was in exchange in uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina, and uh, life was good. Uh, it's a really nice, uh, nice country, like uh, with a lot of European uh, buildings and uh, lifestyle. Like it's called the, the Paris of uh, South America, but also with this uh, South American, you know, uh, I don't know, tension, heat, and uh, sketchy stuff. So I was exchanged there, and uh, when I uh, I was planning my trip, everybody was telling me to bring some euros with me or dollars. So I was a bit intrigued, and uh, so when I arrived there, I discovered that you could change like those euros or uh, dollars for more than what they're worth with the, the, the official uh, change rate. Oh. So yeah, <laughs> very awesome. So with that, I was able to uh, like to double my, uh, my lifestyle. So it's like if you have $10, yeah. then you change it to pesos. Yeah. And then you, with the official exchange mm -hmm. rate, you can change it back to $20. So the thing is like uh, in Argentina, they, they have this money, the Argentinian pesos. And it's uh, at the time, back in uh, 2013, it was really, it changed a lot. Like, uh, it was pretty much unstable and people, like, they, they weren't comfortable to, uh, to save money in pesos. So they were willing to buy uh, dollars, euros, or any foreign, like, currency for more than what, what it was worth. Okay. So this is called, the, I think, the pesos blue. Okay. And so, uh, for instance, if, I, uh, if the official rate was like uh, $1 is uh, 5 pesos, like the, the, the blue rate was like $1 is worth 10 pesos. So how do you find these people? Like so so it's, it's, it was like kind of known by everybody, but uh, since like Argentinians, they don't have euros or dollars, they had to, uh, to do some crazy tricks to, to find that money or uh, try to, uh, to have foreigners do it for them. So in my case, so I had, I had brought like a thousand euros to change at the beginning. So I was uh, like wandering around with my roommate just to find some places where we could change uh, some euros into uh, pesos. Okay. And so we were in this kind of luxury neighborhood uh, called uh, Recoleta. And, uh, and we were asking around in like luxury malls and everything. And uh, like one store owner told us that we could go in uh, like basically buzz at the, at the ring and then someone would answer and we will be able to change money in there. So That's all so, so sketchy. Yeah. So we found that place, we, uh, we rang, and then inside there was like a kind of a mafia accountant there with uh, like all the uh, old cashier and everything. And uh, we're not sure like how, if we had to kind of deal, negotiate the rate or what it was, but she told us the rate and it was good for what for we read. So, uh, so we did it. She uh, she counted uh, she like she counted our euros, then gave us the the pesos at the like the unofficial rate, and so that was it. And then we jumped on a on a cab and went back to our place because we were a bit scared. Like uh, Argentina is not that safe. So you basically got two thousand dollars worth of pesos for your thousand dollars. Kind of, yeah. I mean euros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, and then we also tried some other places because this one was far from our house. So the, the next one I went to was, uh, was like a coin store, which had some, uh, like basically some uh, kind of, when you're at the border, you have some, uh, like some, uh, I don't know how to say that. Like collection coins? For like yeah, collection coins, but there was like someone in, a, in an office, like a change date oh, with a yeah. glass and uh, you know. Okay, like the change, like changing bureaus. Changing bureau, yeah. Yeah, okay. But uh, like in a coin store, so you could go through, with a, through a door and go there. Right. So uh, there was this, but the problem was that we, when you were there, you didn't have euros or dollars. So we had to find ways to find ways to get some. So a popular way to do that was to go to uh, Uruguay. So it's uh, an hour and a half of uh, of boat uh, of boat drive from there, and there you have some cashiers where you can uh, directly like withdraw US dollars. So we went there partly for that. <laughs> it was a new country too. And so, uh, so we had to uh, we had to uh, work a lot to find uh, like a distributor that had U.S. dollars, and then we came back and changed it. 
Then I also did it in uh, in Chile. So I uh, I withdrew some uh, some Chilean pesos. So it's a lot. Like I don't know uh, what's the the change rate here, but I had like a. I don't know, maybe a few hundred thousand uh, Chilean pesos. So it felt like I was rich, but uh, yeah. and uh, and then I was able to change it to US dollars in Chile too, and come back and change it. Ah. But the the best thing I found, like uh, at the at the end of my exchange, was that uh, I found a legit company that you see everywhere that's called uh, Ria, mm -hmm. Ria Money Transfer, and uh, so I was able to uh, to have my mom go in France and uh, basically give uh, some euros to someone in. Uh, in a legit way, <laughs> and uh, and then I'd go to the to the Ria office in Argentina. It's like Western Union, basically. Yeah, it's a, a competitor. Yeah, and uh, so I went there to get my money, and I had the money at the illegal change. Yeah. So I did, I don't know how that worked, but uh, <laughs> I I found a way to, a legitimate way to get money like at uh, the illegal rate in Argentina. So that was great because I was able to uh, like live the good life in exchange <laughs> like. Uh, Eat like a king and uh, travel for the same like the same amount of money I spend here in Montreal. So that was great, and uh, and it even went further than that. Like uh, I told you, I had some friends who uh, who did some uh, like some money trade for so, for some money to to gain uh, revenue there. And so as a foreigner in Argentina, you can ch you can change uh, pesos into dollars, and Argentinians can't. So they they put up some schemes in order to have uh, foreign people change money for them. So for instance, some friends of mine they uh, they met the guys. They were given like a big uh, big chunk of money, and they had to go to uh, to a bank to change it. And uh, the guys who did that they also gave us some fake bank receipts. So they had the bank receipt saying that they uh, they withdrew the money and uh, the money, and they were able to change it back to dollars. And then the guy would give them a, a cut of the of the, the change. And the guys would be able to change it back to pesos, and that know, sounds very uh, illegal. <laughs> it's very illegal, and uh, and yeah, and uh, um, a girl I knew, uh, a friend's friend, well, got caught with that. She was French, and uh, it went bad. <laughs> she uh, so the police, uh, the bank told the police. The police came. She got arrested. She was in prison. Argentinian and, uh, prison. Argentinian prison. Wow. And uh, they were still able to bribe the police. Since it's Argentina, like, uh, and so in the end, like uh, I think they bribed they bribed the police pretty well, and uh, she she was able to uh, to go home, but uh, she wouldn't be able to come to Argentina for uh, I think a good amount of years. Ooh, okay, so. that's that, that's that's really crazy. Can you still do that now? No, I don't think so. Like in uh, I think the new Argentinian president Macri, I think he stopped it because uh, like Argentina, it's it's not that great in. Uh, like uh, as far as economics is concerned, yeah. and he wants to to make things like uh, smoother because they they have the basically the worst credit rate a country can get because they do sketchy stuff like that. So uh, so now it's uh, it's more legit. I I've, I went to the website. Uh, it's uh, pesoblue.com, yeah. and uh, I still see like a small difference between the official rate and the unofficial rate. So I think it might still be going on, but uh, yeah. But not at the the rate it no, was back then. No, no. Thanks for watching. You can watch all the other travel stories I did. There's one where Alex drives into Transnistria and then there's like some more where I just end up in some really strange, weird parties. So yeah, you should go watch the whole playlist. It's really fun. And I'll try to find some new people to tell some more crazy stories. It's always fun. Everybody has stuff yeah. like this, huh? When you, travel, <laughs> when you travel, something always happens, Yeah, for sure. So yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, Elizabeth.